All right, hello, I'm Stephen Sadler, the author of Money and Power, The Secret History. And I want to invite you to just play with some new ideas, open your mind a little bit. 9-11 is a very hot topic, and I wasn't there. I don't know what happened. Um, but there's so much information, I think at the very least, would cause us to have an inquiry. I think we need to look at this deeper than we have. The 9-11 Commission report is a joke. And some of the facts that I think we need to to go over, just to consider, to know that the possibility of something, other people being involved that we don't yet know about. Um, the first point that we need to consider is that the first responders, the police and the firemen, dozens and dozens of them, stated that there were bombs going off in the subterranean floors and on the mezzanine and main floors. They experienced explosions, not just compression pops from when a floor collapsed up above, which is what some people have maintained, but they were there saying bombs went off. And uh, that information has been repressed. Um, evidence has been revealed that um, massive amounts of thermite, or thermate, a, a, a carbon-bonded derivative that's licensed only to the United States and only used for demolition purposes was found in massive quantities by many people. And the people that found this information out that an agent used for demolition was found in copious amounts at the 9-11 or World Trade Center site. They've all been kind of suppressed. They got fired from their offices. One guy was a professor at the uh, Salt Lake University. And Others around the world have all come to the same conclusions, that there's definitely a demolition. All the, the evidence, all of a sudden disappeared. Now, when you have a crime scene, they don't usually just get rid of all the evidence. Why would they take all that evidence and move it away? If it's in the way, moving it to a storage yard, perhaps, but not allowing anybody to investigate and test the materials? It's very suspect to begin with. The NIST report, which is the official report from the government, didn't even look at at how they didn't even look at if there might have been an explosion or a demolition. They didn't address how the building actually collapsed either, if you read it, which I did. So, and, build, and the best evidence is building number seven was demolished, and we know that. It was pulled. There was charges set, and the building came down just like the, the other two World Trade Towers came down, collapsing in from the middle, just like a demolition. So demolition companies from all over the world said, no, that's a demolition. That information's out there. You can look it up on the internet. Matter of fact, our first correspondence, uh, when you watch the news on 9-11 itself, all mentioned that it looked like the, an enclosure from the inside, like how they plan to break it so it closes in on itself to create less of a mess, where normally when something's hit from the outside, it tends to topple it to the side. So we can, we can argue these points all day long, but this evidence keeps stacking up one upon the other. The other is Strategic Air Command. Now, how is it that they just happened to be doing simulation exercises on that day? I mean, who picked that day to do the simulation exercises? That's pretty much a coincidence, isn't it? Not to mention the fact that um, aircraft that would normally be scrambled weren't scrambled. The, the two aircraft that were scrambled got sent directions once they were in the air to go out to the Atlantic. They flew hundreds of miles away from the city. Why would they be sent away from the site that they were supposed to check into? No one ever goes back and investigates that. So the jets scrambled. Uh, NSA, the National Security Agency, apparently had been tracking conversations with the terrorists for over a year. Yet none of that information was given to the CIA or the FBI. Doesn't that sound... Uh, suspicious to you? There's a pre presidential protocol too whenever, if the nation's ever to be attacked, which the President Bush was told we were attacked during his famous reading at the, at the elementary school. Well, the protocol is you would always move the president. If he was in a place that was uh, known to the public, meaning a terrorist would know how to find him because he was scheduled to be at this school at this particular time and place, it's the Secret Service's job to move the president immediately, yet they didn't move him. So that's very, very unusual, and that's not talked about very much. And more than that, Securicom, and they've changed the name of this company, was um, run by Bush's brother, the guy in charge of security for the, both the World Trade Center and the airports where the terrorists left. The head of security for those, um, both those areas 
was George Bush's brother, for crying out loud. I mean, and you say, well, to what end? Well, that became the excuse, 9-11 became the excuse for going to war, both in uh, Afghanistan and in Iraq. And the American people did not want to go to war. This is what turned it around. I want you to think about that for a minute. As hard as it is to believe, I think it's something we all need to ponder. Don't we?